I know that for now this is my place, my home away from home. But it is a hostile home, full of people who despise me for not having money. Despite the fact that I feel deeply blessed to have the opportunity to study at Rhodes, my first year was extremely difficult for social more than academic reasons. Only students from my socioeconomic background would understand this. These were the words of Rhodes University student Siander Santwa, which became popular on social networks when he spoke out on a silence he's faced with. This was made possible through the assistance of Dr. Pedro Tabansky in a series titled Tales of a Divided City, published on Grocott's Mail. One of the things that's concerned me is a kind of vacuum in, in the journalism um, world. The idea is to encourage people to start to think about these sorts of very nuanced and really disturbing issues. When uh, this article was published, you know, there were some of my friends who said, how can you, like, uh, disclose such information? How are, like, other students going to see you? The city of Grahamstown is home to about 120,000 people. Contributing to that figure is Rhodes University, an institution attended by students of various ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds. Rhodes is considered to be a prestigious space that often encourages a variety of discussions. Yet the discussion of class differences have yet to be normalized. We're trying to be so politically correct all the time and try to never offend anyone that we just don't talk about it. A lot of people come from the township here in Grahamstown and like I've spoken to people and heard of situations where people feel like an outsider in their own town. I feel as though it's a very like close-knit community and even though people come from different social backgrounds and economic backgrounds, I feel as though when you come to Rose, everyone comes together. I think in a way we're quite diverse in the, in the sense of political views and ethical views held by students. We're very diverse and there's a nice open ground for debating about these things. Many students don't come out and talk about this, uh, the issue of classes. And I think they are also not platforms. I mean, you haven't seen any protest with regards to such issues. So that on its own, it speaks to the issue of students are silent about such issues. So why aren't these conversations held at Rhodes? I once took some of my friends to the township. They were shocked to see that the, in Grahamstown there are places like this, you know, people with no electricity, no sanitation, nothing. And when you when you hear at Rhodes, you don't see those things. You think that Grahamstown is like Rhodes. The truth of the matter is that we live in a very divided society. You know, when you come to Rhodes, yeah, it's a different scene. You know, um, you 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 are defined by what you have. Those people who come from underprivileged um, backgrounds, they tend to think of money more often. Like they're more concerned about how much this costs. Will it cost any money? Is it free? Is it not free? How will I pay for that, you know? Whereas middle class students, they don't really worry about that because they always have a certain amount of money. Other people stress the, uh, their parents out by like wanting expensive clothes, you know, and gadgets because they want to conform. Students who live in residence have support systems in place through the supervision and control of house committees and wardens. But to what extent are these useful to students? I think it's silenced to the extent where we're not quite aware of how big this problem is. We assume that Rhodes is a big diverse society, we accept everyone, therefore now we've done our job. So there's kind of not like a further interrogation of this problem. And as a result of that, I do think we're not kind of adequate. There's no training or no adequate training if you're lucky one of your subwardens or the warden or someone in, in who coincidentally is in a leadership position is sensitive to these issues. The difficulty with a house committee is that the strengths of a house com are primarily within the strengths of the individual. In my res this year we have had a few issues come up like with class and fitting in and socioeconomic issues. Um, they tend to be more reserved and like away from the main group. Um, the house committee are very often I feel are a resource um, and have a powerful role to play in the res in terms of bridging those spaces and bridging those gaps. Alternative social spaces such as the Facebook page Rhodes Confessions have since become a popular platform in which students use anonymity to express the unspoken. I think Rhodes Confession is an amazing platform that is actually being used 
um, really, really well, and I'm surprised it's kept going. And it's because it's a place for people to find solace. It says a lot that Rose Confessions is so popular. I actually went to look at UCT Confessions the other day, see what the popularity, and they hadn't posted in like a week or two. Whereas Rhodes was still updating daily. And it's because I think Rhodes has a lot to say that's not said in, out loud. We spoke to social media expert Jude Matherine, who explains this phenomenon. Spaces like Twitter and Facebook, conversations that occur within people's networks where they know that they are visible, they know they can be surveilled, but people know who they are, tend to be very different. So people will represent themselves very differently. Like Those what? people might tend to feel that their views are going to be marginalised in those spaces, so they're silent about this. This introduces what is known as spirals of silence in this space. And so while Rhodes prides itself on being a space, and it fosters a sense of community and communication, there are aspects around its, its own existence that might be, they might be blind to until people use mediums and forums like this that provide measures of anonymity. In addition to social support, Rhodes provides financial funding schemes to assist students. Rhodes alumni offices fundraise and organize the university's annual fund through various initiatives. And we raise money for a number of things. It will be, you know, scholarships, it will be research. um, uh, resources, it will be research, it will be infrastructure, it will be sports foundation, you know, it will be different faculties projects. Um, so annual fund is for all lower level sort of grassroots giving. And that will be individuals like you and I that will be keen to give from as little as 100 rand per month over a period of time. The first year is when I come in. You, you can pick up it, and there, there is almost a stigma, and I don't know if it's coming from mm. their background because they're coming to roads and they feel that they are poor. By the end of that first year, I have noticed the students change. Their confidence has grown, and they've realised that a lot of students are on financial aid. A lot of students are battling financially. And I think by the second year, third year, students are not um, shy or embarrassed to say they need bursaries. The funds raised are then distributed among financial aid programs that are in place for successful applicants. Our financial aid budget is about 50% from, from the National Student Financial Aid Scheme and then 50% from the institution. So that, th that is the majority of our funding. Um, we've also got internal bursaries um, from funds that are invested in the foundation and from donations that are made by outside companies. These funding schemes are primarily for students that come from low-income households. But what happens to students who fall into the middle class bracket and encounter difficulty in covering payments? A lot of our middle class students cannot afford to pay road fees because 15,000 rand is our cut off, but to be quite honest with you, um, even with 20,000 rand, you still will not be able to pay plus minus 90,000 rand a year, you know, because road fees are expensive. Um, so I know that that is, that that is the group that is really, really frustrated because they can't get financial assistance because the institution says they are not needy enough and they cannot get the bank loans from the banks because the banks say you don't earn enough to be able to get a student loan at least for the duration of three or four years at university. In addition to financial resources, student representation is also found on campus. SASCO does uh, uh, constantly engage members of government um, and in essence through the, those engagements they've managed to actually get government to uh, you know, to double the numbers of enrollments within institutions uh, via financial aid. We are thinking about the realities of financial exclusion. So what's best is to actually access funding from government to ensure that those realities don't exist. Although Rhodes is considered to be a progressive space, the realities of students are still in drastic contrast to each other. I think it is our agency in this age to challenge these issues uh, and to make sure that everyone who gets into this institution feels at home. We are quick to see ourselves as this diverse place. We are the liberal university. We have that reputation. And though, yes, that is something that we say we embody, I think we need to be realistic and recognize that there's still a lot of work to be done and that particularly with class I think is the case that uh, yes we've kind of recognized it to an extent 
but it's too early to say that we don't have class issues at Rhodes.